when I first started losing weight after about the first 20 pounds, when I was down to about 260 pounds, I was doing keto and my triglycerides were still really high. Now, you, some of you might be experiencing this, and even if you're not, it's important that you know what's going on, because I learned along the way why my triglycerides were elevated, but I also had to learn throughout the process what the heck a triglyceride was. So I'm here to share with you what exactly a triglyceride is, why you should be paying attention to them, and how you might be able to alter your lower carb or intermittent fasting lifestyle to make sure that your triglycerides are where they need to be so you end up with the most weight loss, because triglycerides do have a direct relationship with your overall fat loss. Hey, I wanna make sure you hit that red subscribe button. We got about two million subscribers now. Then go ahead and hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications. You never wanna miss a beat. Almost every single day we have new videos coming out at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. Now, let's drop into some science. So triglycerides are our main energy reserve when it comes down to fat. They're not some super complicated thing. They're actually very, very basic. Now, here's how they're made up. Now, please stick with me because this gets a little bit complex, but I promise I'll make it as simple as possible. There's a glycerol backbone. Basically, you have a backbone and you have three fatty acids that are along this glycerol backbone. That is a triglyceride. So maybe you've heard me talk or other people talk about fatty acids. All fatty acids are, are little pieces of fat that have been liberated from a full triglyceride. So here's the thing. Triglycerides don't mix in water. They don't mix in blood. They need to be carried by specific lipoproteins. Okay, they need to be carried in little boats because if they go into the, the blood, they just, they just kind of float around. They don't do anything. They need to go in specific boats. So that's actually what LDL is. So they actually get carried in little boats, which we know of as LDL. You see, LDL is not really bad. It's the job of LDL not to move cholesterol, but to move triglycerides. So triglycerides are the storage form of fat that we are trying to get moving in order to burn it. We will ultimately burn a triglyceride once it's broken down, but it has to be carried by LDL. That's a story for another day, and I'll go ahead and link out to my videos that explain LDL down below in the description. Okay, so here's the thing. We eat triglycerides. When you're covering your salad with a little bit of olive oil or you're diving into a tasty burger with saturated fat, that fat that you're eating is a triglyceride. It's that simple. So what happens is you eat that triglyceride, it goes into your system, and once it goes into your gut, it gets acted upon by pancreatic lipase, an enzyme that breaks it down. And it breaks it down into those wonderful free fatty acids, those liberated fats. And those free fatty acids enter cells in our intestinal tract. And when they enter the cells inside of our intestinal tract, they get repackaged back into triglycerides. So it's like you eat a fat, it's as a triglyceride, it gets broken down, and then it crosses through the cell and it gets packaged back up into a triglyceride again. It goes from food to broken down back to food. And this triglyceride in our bloodstream now hops on a specific boat called a cliomicron. I don't wanna bore you with details there because honestly, cliomicrons are complicated, but basically they're the same kind of thing as LDL except they carry a triglyceride right after it's been eaten, whereas LDL carries a triglyceride after it's being liberated from the tissue. That's the only difference. One is a boat that takes it to the liver, one is a boat that takes it to the peripheral tissue. That's the only difference. Either way, triglyceride likes to go for rides. So now you're talking about a low carb diet. You're talking about keto and stuff and you're concerned that your triglycerides are elevated. Well, generally speaking, keto should reduce your triglycerides. And nine times out of 10, it does, but it's still important that you're aware of where your levels are at. So just to give you a matter of reference, let's talk about an interesting study. So this study was published in the journal Lipids, okay? A really broad scale study. It was published in 2008, and it took a look at 40 participants. Okay, these 40 participants were overweight, and they were divided into two groups. Okay, so one group was a keto group and one group was a non-keto group, but they were isocaloric, which means that they ate the same amount of calories. The only difference was the keto group ate twice as much fat and three times as much saturated fat. But guess what they found at the end of this study? Pretty alarming, the triglycerides for the keto group were half as much as the other group. So they ate twice as much fat, three times as much saturated fat, but their overall triglycerides dropped. Why did this happen? Well, it happened simply because the body became more efficient at utilizing fat. 
So when your doctor is concerned that your triglycerides are gonna be high because you're eating all of this fat, you could explain to him, well, doctor, my body is going to be highly motivated to use these fats because it's its main fuel source. So if they get liberated, they're going to get burned. So rather than just floating aimlessly in the bloodstream as high triglyceride levels, they go into the bloodstream and they get taken up by cells and utilized. Hence why we lower triglycerides because we're actually burning fat. Now, that being said, you might see that your triglycerides go up and sometimes they're down. What is going on? Let's go ahead and let's break this down because there's three real possible reasons. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you the possibilities and then I'm gonna just give you a little checklist. It's just something that you can pay attention to, things that you can change to reduce your triglycerides and things that you should pay attention to regardless of whether you have high triglycerides or not. Okay, the first thing is you're dancing that fine line and having a tad too many carbs. Carbs get converted into triglycerides. And if you just so happen to have just enough carbs to kick you out of keto, then you're dancing that fine line where the fats and the carbs are getting turned into triglycerides. So that could elevate your triglycerides really high. So even if you're just borderline keto, if you're not all the way keto, but you're sitting on that edge, not necessarily a bad thing, but you will notice your triglycerides go up and that can totally throw off your numbers. So the best thing that you can do there is reduce your fruit a little bit and reduce your carb intake maybe by 20, 30% just to see if you can get that number down a bit. The next thing that it could be could simply be the time that you're testing. Okay, remember, it doesn't matter how deep in ketosis you are, when you eat, you will have an elevation of triglycerides because of course you just ate and those triglycerides are getting packaged back into the triglyceride form and they're delivered through the bloodstream until they're in their storage form. So you're going to have an elevation. So if you're not properly fasted for like 10, 12 hours, you're definitely going to show a skewed result. That's very important. Bulletproof coffee, any of that stuff is going to affect it. The third thing is going to be a genetic mutation. And this goes a little bit beyond this video, but there's things that you can ask your doctor about, there's tests that you can look at, because it's very important. Okay, you could have genetic mutations in specific proteins that affect your fatty acid metabolism. And it doesn't mean you can't do keto, it just means you need to change some things. For example, if you know that you have the APOE4 mutation, if you know that you have any kind of mutation with what is called PPAR alpha or PPARY, or FTO, or CPT1, okay? Any of these things, if they ring a bell, sound familiar, it might simply be that you might not wanna do keto or you might need to change some things, but we can do videos on those separate things just entirely. Uh, it's called nutrigenetics. It all depends on like what your body needs as far as a genetic potential goes. Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who is really well known in the keto and fasting space, actually has some resources to make it so that you can test for these things. Uh, I can link out to them down below too. But anyway, let's talk about things that you should be paying attention to and ways that you can reduce your triglycerides regardless of whether you're keto, whether they're high, or whether you feel sick or not. The first thing is try Mediterranean keto. What I mean by that is high amounts of olive oil, high amounts of avocado, high amounts of lean protein, not saturated fat as much. I'm not anti-saturated fat. You've seen my videos on that before, right? Okay, the point is here, if you're focused on triglycerides, monounsaturated fats like olive oil are much more powerful when it comes down to reducing triglycerides. There was a 2013 study, took a look at 62 participants, divided them into two groups. One group ate a normal diet, the other group ate a normal diet. The only thing that was different was they substituted some oils for regular extra virgin olive oil. Well, guess what? 12% reduction in triglycerides simply by switching to olive oil. Why? Because monounsaturated fats are shown to reduce triglycerides. So super important, whether you're keto or not, that you're focusing on this. The other thing that we wanna do is if you're doing a Mediterranean style diet or anything, high, high quality omega-3 meats. Okay, this means really good quality, spend the extra couple bucks and eat smaller amounts of good quality grass-fed, grass-finished meat, or good quality fish or whatever it needs to be, okay? Now, if you guys do eat grass-fed meat, I highly recommend you check out ButcherBox down below in the description. I put a link there. They are an online meat delivery service that is one of the only places you can get legitimate grass-fed and grass-finished high omega-3 beef. So if you're trying to eat clean and still wanna eat red meat, that's gonna be the way to go. So there's a link. They deliver it right to your doorstep and it's cheaper than the grocery store. Plus, you're gonna save an extra 20 bucks by going through my link down below, which is just awesome because they support this channel so much. So please make sure you check them out if you're focused on getting your blood levels where you want them. Okay, the other thing that we have to pay attention to in tandem with eating the good quality omega-3 meats is a decent amount of fiber if you're focused on triglycerides. 
I have my things about fiber. Sometimes I say it's necessary, sometimes it's not. But the thing with fiber is it does help reduce some of the fats that are absorbed. So therefore, it's going to reduce your triglycerides a bit. The next thing that you can do is focus on doing some higher intensity endurance work. Not necessarily high intensity interval training, but studies have shown that if you do endurance work and you push it up over that 65 to 70% max heart rate zone, for some reason, it lowers triglycerides dramatically. We don't really know why. So low and slow cardio doesn't really do it. You'd actually have to get on a bike and you'd have to go for like 15, 20 minutes at a fairly decent intensity, not in a typical interval fashion, but in a more sustained fashion. For some reason, it drops your triglycerides. This next one, this third one, is going to be difficult for some. Okay? It has to do with alcohol. All right, here's the thing. When it comes to alcohol, just 38 milliliters of alcohol, that's like two standard drinks, have been shown in studies to elevate triglycerides 52%. Why? Because it has to do with liver metabolism. So reduce your alcohol intake. If you drop alcohol out of the equation, then quite honestly, you're gonna be in much, much better shape with your triglycerides. But even if you just cut it in half, you can go from a 52% increase to maybe just a 26% increase in triglycerides. It's pretty powerful. You gotta take care of that liver that is packaging and processing fats, okay? The next thing we gotta focus on is get that fructose, that fruit, down to a little bit lower level, whether you're keto or not. Fructose does not get metabolized by other cells in the body. So what that means is that when you consume regular sugar like glucose, other cells in our body throughout our brain and our tissues and everything like that can utilize it. They can burn it. But guess what? When you eat fruit, fructose can only be utilized by the liver, which means that it gets extra priority in getting packaged into a triglyceride through what's called de novo lipogenesis. That's right. Carbs that get to the liver do get turned into triglycerides. So fruit, although it's tasty and has its benefits, can be very dangerous when it comes down to triglyceride levels. So reduce that fruit content. And if you're doing keto and you have a little berry treat every now and then, just keep it to a quarter cup of strawberries or blueberries. And last but not least, and this is a really simple one that we don't even know why it does it, but heck, it's pretty cool, adding lots of garlic in. Studies have shown, for whatever reason, garlic seems to reduce triglycerides. We don't really know. It's probably one of the numbers of different enzymatic functions that garlic has, but we haven't really pinpointed it. We just know that garlic seems to reduce triglycerides in all kinds of different clinical settings. So cook with garlic, add it in. It could be the fiber situation, it could be the enzymes, who knows? But anyhow, you have a few tips to lower those triglycerides no matter what the particular case. Again, Mediterranean Keto is gonna be the best solution, and I ask you, if you don't mind, check out ButcherBox down below. But now you know all about triglycerides, and we can dive in a little bit deeper. If you have ideas for future videos, put them down below. See you soon.